BBOR Black Box Online Radio coming to you from West Virginia. And there's a bonus podcast available on Instagram, BlackBoxNed88. So the other day, I was watching an old episode of Frasier. I was talking about that on the uh, Instagram podcast. And Niles Crane mentioned Hugo Boss ties, and he was talking about them. So I got on Google, and I decided to just look at some images of Hugo Boss ties. And the autofill kept prompting me to search for Hugo Boss Nazi Party, Hugo Boss Nazi Connections. And I was like, what on earth is this? This might be the first time we've ever done an upload that is um, having autofill as its source material. But I began to look into some more things about the individual, Hugo Boss, as well as his connections to the fashion industry and Nazi Germany, so to speak. Hugo Boss was born in 1885, and he passed away in 1948. And when he is mentioned with things associated with the Nazi party, very particularly, it comes like up in that he was a person who was involved with the production of the Nazi uniforms the black uniforms worn by the SS, as well as other people were working with him in the design process. And Hugo Boss opened a company in 1923, but the company really became off the ground in 1924. And then, of course, Nazi Germany would go on the rise. And then there was um, a documentary about this on YouTube. It's from the channel M2M. And they're talking about how in the 1920s, Germany often has a a reputation for being an economically weaker nation. However, the fashion industry in Berlin was very powerful in Germany, even during those years. And then the Great Depression in, began to take on later in the 1920s, also dragged down Germany and Berlin. I thought that was a rather surprising statement to make, but that's what their claim was all the same. So then, yes, Hugo Boss became the fashion designer and the person behind the fashion designers for Nazi Germany. That's a big nutshell version. But the reason why is because this is one of the things that I thought was also rather neglected in many discussions. The Nazis were very much involved with appearances. And it was the entire concept of how you got to look your best to persuade people. And I was just listening to an episode of WCR earlier today, and they just were talking about Adolf Hitler a bit. I mean, it was completely unrelated to this. I already planned on talking about Hugo Boss on this upload. And what they were saying on WCR was that Adolf Hitler was someone who not only had plans, but he often made responses to social situations. He often responded to social pressures. Yes, he had a vision, and yes, he was crazy, but he also would do things in response to way, the way that people were pressuring him, especially the social and political climate, and that's why he made his decisions. In short, very much go with the flow and then just try to keep his head above water, so to speak. And I really thought that that fit in very nicely with a lot of the things that they were saying about the Nazis wanting to have a particular appearance. And I mean, it seems like Hugo Boss is in terms of fashion, which is an area that I really have to confess I do not know an enormous amount about. But when you're watching the M2M documentary, they're really showing how many of the things from Hugo Boss have affected um, contemporary fashion in an evolutionary way. But you can even also see some reminiscent things from the uniforms of the SS. And you can just see about how it's meant to present a particular image and make people think in a particular way. There is also a statement that the black SS uniforms in Nazi Germany around the time of World War II, of course, I mean, we're, we're dealing with these uniforms all the way into the early 1930s, well before World War II, of course, these would also have a possible occult significance. Like if you can imagine some druids or something with those long, dark robes around in a circle and, or something like that. And it is possible. It is always possible because this will come up time and time again that global elites have connections to um, 
occult rituals and practices and that it has a certain significance and that we're commissioned in this particular way. But, I mean, is that really what Hugo Boss intended with the production of these uniforms? And I that I do not know. That is just a rumor. And I want to be very precise that something like that is a rumor. But um, another th thing that I uh, heard about Adolf Hitler was that um, we were I was going through the book Loser Thing, which I'm reading now by Scott Adams. And it talks a little bit about there's just one sentence in there regarding Adolf Hitler. And it says that, yes, of course, they're also saying that Hitler was crazy, but he often set out to do things that he knew that he could accomplish. There's just this one sentence in there. And one of the ways that he would do that is through persuasion. And he would try and persuade people in a way in which he knew would be successful. This ties all back to appearances. I mean, appearance is very valuable in the political world. In the United States of America here, our former president, Martin Van Buren, really used that as like an asset to escalate his, his political career. He was the son of Taverniers, New Amsterdam. In fact, um, as far as we know, the only president to grow up with English as a second language, his first language was, of course, Dutch in New Amsterdam, if you can imagine. And he was the son of Taverniers, and he had a very shabby appearance and he was advised by someone that he had very good ideas but if he improved his appearance then he would be taken more seriously when he expressed these ideas and they're trying to put that line of thinking in touch with the material that was presented surrounding hugo boss and his connections to nazi germany that the nazis wanted to have a particular appearance that they would present to the world and people would start thinking about them in a particular way. In short, appearances are very valuable and they do affect how people think. And behavioral psychology is something very real. Now, I would like to look at a particular uh, piece about Hugo Boss and his connections to Nazi Germany here in an article from the New York Times. It was written back in 1997. And you'll find that this is coming up from time and time again. Yes, of course, Hugo Boss materials can be sold at designer boutiques. But what I noticed when I was looking at these things is you would find that an article would come up about 1997 here that's just saying, oh, look, a connection to Nazi Germany for the Hugo Boss label. But then they're going to say the same thing in 2013 in an article that we're going to look at in just a second. But this one is from 1997 features a quote from Siegfried Boss, the son of Hugo Boss. And he says, of course. My father belonged to the Nazi party, Siegfried Boss, age 83, said in the latest issue of the Austrian News Weekly Profile. But who didn't belong to the party back then? The whole industry worked for the Nazi army. Hugo Boss founded the textile factory in 1923, Miss Stylin said. He joined the party in 1931 and two years later began ma manufacturing Nazi uniforms. Production continued throughout the war and according to the profile, the company brought forced laborers from Poland and France to its factory to increase output in the later years. And as I understand, there was a very particular war that was going on between Germany and France in 1930 and 31. After Hugo Boss's death, the factory returned to making uniforms for postal and police workers. It produced its first men's suits in the 1950s, but did not focus exclusively on men's fashion until later. Now, this is um, a controversy about Hugo Boss and his connections to the uh, Nazi German party that was resurfaced back in 2013, as we mentioned, because of a particular comedian actor named Russell Brand. If you ever get a chance to watch Russell Brand in the Messiah Complex, it's a very entertaining stand-up comedy show, but he even admits in some of the material by his own admission that he is very critical of how the world works, but he is also somewhat of a hypocrite, a victim of hypocrisy, someone who perpetrates hypocrisy because he often benefits from many of the ways in which the uh, world has its own corrupt mechanisms. And one of these things is what we're going to see here. And this is going to an article from the dailymail.co.uk, once again from 2013. On Tuesday night, the comedian Russell Brand was thrown out of GQ magazine's Man of the Year Awards after for an after show jive about the event's sponsor, Hugo Boss, and the fashion company's historic links to the Nazi party. While on stage, Brand told the gathered celebrities and politicians, 
If anyone knows a bit about history and fashion, you know it was Hugo Boss who made uniforms for the Nazis. He then added a less subtle irony, but they look fucking fantastic. Let's face it, they looked fucking fantastic while they were killing people on the basis of their religion and sexuality. But it has emerged that Brand himself is not averse to a spot of the designer's sharp tailoring, having apparently been snapped wearing a jacket by the German fashion firm in February of that year, 2013, mind you. And this um, article continues on there, but I think you get the basic idea. And once again, like I said, Russell Brand is very open that he can be hypocritical from time to time. And they're like, all right, he's saying that he wants to call out Hugo Boss for having connections to... Nazi Germany, but then he also wears Hugo Boss labels, you know, Hugo Boss clothing and such. So, I mean, not much of a leg to stand on there. So this article is trying to argue, but um, hypocrisy all the same. Now, when it comes to that, the M2M documentary was mentioning some things about why the name Hugo Boss. I mean, like, for example, this is the name of this guy, but if he has all these connections to Nazi Germany and they're trying to operate in the United Kingdom and the United States of America and around the world, why do they have to use this particular name? I mean, they could have chosen any name. They just call it HB or something. Or like, um, as some people refer to um, this in like articles and such, Hugo Bo SS, of course, to, going back to the SS, Hugo Bo SS. And they simply said in the M2M documentary that Hugo Boss is a name that sounds strong. That's why they chose to keep using the name, even though, of course, I mean, they were very well aware that there were going to be tensions between the United Kingdom and Germany after World War II. I mean, understatement of the last 2000 years, as well as the United States of America and Germany after World War II. Any of the people who were the Allied powers versus the Axis powers, there are going to be post-war tensions. And they were very much aware of that. But they're like, it's a name that sounded strong. The label took off. And like I said, though, um, just looking at the articles and the dates on them, it seems like they're really trying to um, hype, hype, hypen up the scandal. I was trying to say hype and hypen at the same time, and I think that's what came out. But it's that really is what is going on here, because it seems like a very famous name here, all around the world, actually. I was about to say here in America, but all around the world. And from time to time, the journalists are going to say, oh, yes, well, there is a connection to the Nazi party. However, I mean, as Hugo Boss's son said, everybody in Germany had some connection to the Nazi party back in 1931 and 32. Do you think that that is a reason to ban all labels of something like Hugo Boss because he was involved with the production of uniforms for the Nazis? Or do you believe that um, that is something that is purely irrelevant and that he was not behind anything to do with Adolf Hitler, and let alone Adolf Hitler's own madness. To the contrary of everything that they were saying on WCR and um, in Scott Adams' book, Loser, think that Adolf Hitler is this guy who um, is trying to do things that he knows he can accomplish. He's going to be this type of guy who um, knows how to manipulate social perception of himself, or simply by responding it and giving in at these times, pushing back at these times. I mean, it's highly possible that Adolf Hitler... Uh, was suffering from Parkinson's at the later years of his life, so that affected his judgment heavily, and then that led to a whole quagmire of issues going on in that respect. But I would um, just be very curious what any of you guys think about all of this here, and I'd love to hear your response to the challenge question. I'm going to say that that's going to be all for me now, and once again, if you like this upload, you can hit the like button, and if you haven't subscribed yet, it really helps out the channel. And I will see you guys on Instagram for the bonus podcast. Until next time.